Moving on to topic three, I want to talk a little bit about AEW Revolution. As of recording, it happened last night. Um, Pay-per-view happened. It was fun. It was a good event. Um, I have a lot of different thoughts about the card and some things that did happen throughout the night. So similar to anything, I took notes. Um, I'll try not to deep dive too, too long and uh, kind of wallow on it, I guess you could say. But it was a fine show overall. Um, very entertaining. I thought the pace of the show uh, worked out very well. Um, like I said, there was some some great moments, some, whew, not some great moments. Um, but yeah, we'll just run through everything right now. My quick thoughts on all the matches and we'll, uh, talk about the things we want to talk about. So we had the pre-show, the buy-in match. We had, uh, Thunder Rosa and Riho against Britt Baker and the surprising, uh, entrant of Maki Ito. I haven't seen Ito at all. I know she was in the women's qualifier tournament on the japan side of the bracket she seems entertaining seems like people were excited to see her did not expect her to be a heel (laughs) but uh it worked it was a solid match good match for the buy-in heels win i was wondering if maybe this was because rosa was going to be out or on her way out of AEW with nwa uh picking back up um but as we see later on the card that doesn't seem to be the case unless wednesday is the farewell with the three-on-three ladies tag match so good uh good start to the match uh yeah ladies look good look strong so we kick off the show we start with our opening match it's the young bucks versus jericho and mjf for the AEW tag titles uh it's a fine match seemed like some of the moves were a little telegraphed or like they waited for things to happen and then they happened like that seemed a little off um but it was all right uh young bucks come out victorious with this match and we'll see later in the night that the inner circle are going to have a chat on wednesday kind of alludes a little bit to mjf kind of fucking the group up a little bit more and breaking them up um which is going to be interesting to see on wednesday how that plays out um there was one negative i had about the match itself it was so jericho introduced his bat into the match while the referee was distracted i believe he hit matt jackson um hit him in the back and we got the false finish of you know the weapon and will the young bucks be able to break out that was kind of middle of the match that that happened i kind of thought that should have been saved towards the end do the false finish dramatic you know oh god is he gonna kick out he got hit with a weapon and then go right into the finish but having it mid-match just seemed odd pacing wise they were doing a good job build up build up build up and then i think one of the young bucks was hurt or injured and then we do this bat spot but then they kept going for another five or so minutes it just seemed odd placement storytelling wise but once again what do i know I'm not a wrestler, but it it just seemed out of place and weird. Um, I thought it would have benefited more, a lit, uh, benefited a little bit more if it was towards the end to kind of build up that drama instead of flat, 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 spike, back down, blah, 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 and then smooth sailing from there. But just my opinion on that. Second match, we rolled into the casino tag match battle royale, which I actually thought was a lot of fun. Yes, I know it was essentially a Royal Rumble for ta- Royal Rumble for tag teams, but you know what? I was I was totally fine with it and I was entertained. Um, strong finish, very strong finish for Jungle Boy and the Death Triangle. Um, I was really hoping Jungle Boy was going to pull it through. Um, obviously, he did not. Death Triangle wins with I think it was Pat. No, it was Ray Phoenix being the last one in there. Um, seems like they're building Jungle Express and Jungle Boy as like almost like a Daniel Bryan level or like David David versus Goliath thing, like really pushing them down because everybody loves that team, it seems. Um, But like just setback after setback and then eventually when they decide like this is their push, this is when they're going to win it all, whether it be the tag titles or whatever it is, like it's going to pay off that much more, which is why I can understand the result and get behind it. But yeah, I was really really hoping – that Jungle Boy was going to be able to pull out 
uh, the win there and the finish. And I think something that maybe would have helped that along the way was the entrance of teams. So going back to the uh, first match, we had Jericho and MGF enter first, right? And you have the crowd doing Jericho's song of Judas and singing along, whatever. They love that. They love the fan interaction. Why did we not have Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus start this match? Tony Khan shelled out how much money for that song for the crowd to go, oh, 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 and sing along with the, you know, whatever that song name is. I don't remember. You, like, yet you put them halfway into this thing and you cut they cut off the music just as the sing-along part was going to happen totally odd choice why not have them start the match get that little crowd interaction of the song have some fun with it and then if you flipped it and you wanted jungle boy to win do everything the same but because he started at the beginning and then pushed that far to the end and then have him win imagine the payoff there like it's the typical rumble thing like one to the like edge just did start at the beginning finishes it so just just some little things that i was like on like you kind of just missed it there um and even if they did the result the exact same way, like that's a bigger setback. Like, look at what Jungle Boy did. He was there the whole time, but he just couldn't finish that little last teeny part. Like, just unfortunate. So we had that going on. Um, other things that we had happen in the match, uh, we had QT Marshall and uh, Dustin Rhodes, a little drama. Seems like they're breaking up. Confusing to me. Now, I don't watch AEW from week to week just because I can't because of work schedule, and I don't watch it DVR or on demand or whatever. I don't watch it week to week. I catch dark usually, and I'll check the results for the rest of AEW on Twitter, etc. Are they on TV all that much? From my knowledge, they're not. So it's very confusing that they're going with this storyline now. Like, why not have them around on TV a little bit more, doing more, and then have this? I get it, like, why it happens of, like, the elements they showed of, like, hey, I'm eliminating these people. Hey, we're trying to folk win the, the tag titles or get a shot. It doesn't matter who's in our group, not in our group, etc. We should be focused here. I get that. It just seems odd because I don't know if they're on TV all that much and like why we're breaking up the team now type thing, but it is what it is. So we got the setup there. Um, and then a random question, was Top Flight supposed to be in this match? I could have swore they were billed or booked for it earlier, like weeks ago. I saw one of the Top Flight guys, I think the younger brother, out in the crowd at one point. So I don't know if maybe his brother's injured, but I was just like, I thought you guys are supposed to be in this because I thought that was their pay-per-view debut unless that was the last pay-per-view, but I don't think so, because I don't think they were around for that one. But just a thought, thought they were part of it. Moving on to the ladies. I think that was the next match. Might be wrong with the order here, but anyways, the ladies. We had Rio and Hikaru Shida going for the AEW Women's Championship. Uh, I thought it was a good match by the ladies. This one was a solid one, hard-hitting. Um, good match overall. Uh, sets up Wednesday once again with 3v3. Um, I'm wondering who is taking down Cheetah. Do they have to bring someone else in, similar to, like, a Thunder Rosa obviously brought her in, but she hasn't... Did she fight Cheetah? She did once, right? Um, like, who are we bringing in? Is it somebody from Impact we're going to bring in? Is it somebody from New Japan, even though that doesn't seem to work right now with the Japanese tournament even though i don't know if those leaders are signed for new japan like there has to be some big outside talent or somebody big essentially that we're like building not her up but like that has to take her down she's a very steep mountain to climb right now it seems because she's held down to that belt for quite a long time so it's going to be interesting to see who that person is you think it's going to be jade cargill that maybe She's got the look. She's got the charisma. Um, maybe. 
Uh, I don't personally connect with Jade, but then again, she's a heel. That's kind of the point. Also, she's only fought in one match so far. It will be interesting to see where they go from this Shaq match, how they progress with her. Um, it seems like, obviously, they were setting up her and Brandy. Obviously, Brandy's doing her thing now of starting the family. So, unless maybe they do go with Jade, like you're saying. They have Jade beat Sheeta, and then maybe once Brandy's back and ready maybe they have their storyline and either brandy wins or whatever that could be interesting that's a good candidate um i think just right now i'm having a tough time believing that sounds bad but getting behind it just because of the only one match we've seen with her if they continue to push her and she's you know taking on other talent and she's picking up momentum then yeah i'm all for it because once again she's got a look she's got the charisma it's just at this point the experience aspect i guess you could say of it um is lacking um one tiny thing i wish they f not fixed but changed with this match um one thing i thought I, th I wish they changed with this match um i'm not sure if you guys noticed it but after the attack after the the attack um rio was doing like a big bow almost to Sheeta, like just full respect like we went to the edge and yes you beat me and then rosa was obviously right there trying to hand the belt back to sheeta i wish they did that moment before the attack of Britt baker and rebel and uh maki um i wish they had that moment before and kind of like um stretched it out sometimes i think AEW kind of rushes a little bit too much and like what's next if that makes sense i wish they had that moment then you can do all the setup for the next wednesday in the attack just a small change i would have done there papa griff also mentions big swole big swole i could get behind i think she had a moment on dark on saturday the special dark where she was very uh, focused and being like i've been sitting in the back seat for too long i'm coming for gold i think that was her comment i don't know if superman is in the chat maybe he could correct me um, but Swole I could get behind I like Swole She's got a charisma to her too That could be fun Red Velvet killed in on Wednesday too Yeah both of the ladies did really really well um, I think you keep building her up as well She could definitely fit into At least that top echelon Of the ladies talent Which I think is a move that Since the last time We talked to AEW specifically With uh, Sam and Steve That was a big thing they were lacking on Was the ladies talent uh, not that they didn't have the numbers, but like that they didn't have the, um, what's the word? Credibility maybe, or like believability. So I think they're doing better with building them up. Um, so yeah, both Jade and Red Velvet, obviously Wednesday with each other working well. And then yeah, Swole has been gaining momentum. I know on Dark, she's been having a lot of matches. So if you could do that, that'd be great. You'll have Chris Statlander back at some point, too. Yeah, I don't know how her recovery is going. I think she's up and walking around because she's been on BTE lately. Um, but obviously, being on a behind-the-scenes show is not the same as being in the ring. Um, so yeah, if you get her back, too, that adds another element. And then I don't know what Awesome Kong's doing, but obviously adding her in. And then Nyla's already there. Like We're getting there. We're getting a strong division, which is great that they're building upon that. Because um, once again, that was a big, big worry of like this is a lacking point. And if we're going to keep over the crossover content with Impact, with New Japan, potentially, that's just more people we can add in. We can add a Deanna Peraza. We can add a, um, <clears throat> crap, what's her name? The uh, Decay Girl. Um, I don't know. We could have Sue Young, who's another one. Like, you have this other talent. Uh, Jordan Grace is over there. Um, so we could just add more fun to it. Um, and Rose has been a a big piece of it as well rosemary thank you odb as well yes 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 yeah so like you just keep adding these other elements this other talent it could just be better just uh keeps adding to it um once again i'm not 100 percent on the order of these matches guys so i apologize if they're out of order but uh next one i had is hardy and page the big money match um i thought this one was fine um i like the idea of going the like the psychology going after the buckshot lariat hand with the damage with the stairs and then the submissions and whatnot i thought that was good stair storytelling um the interference by private party 
as to be expected. Same with Dark Order being the evening force, as to be expected. Um, so we had Paige going over, gets the first quarter earnings for Matt Hardy. Um, it's going to be interesting to see the aftermath of that with Hardy towards, I assume, Private Party. He's been shitting on them when everything's go wrong. So it would be interesting to see the lay the aftermath of that. And then, once again, we get the teaser. Is Paige going to join Dark Order? Is this going to just be like, hey, Dark Order is going to fanboy every time? I, I, I don't know the route with it. Um, it's just something to watch and keep an, interesting, uh, keep an eye on. Uh, surprise, no negative one appearance at all. Not going to lie. Um, but, yeah, thought that was fine. Fine overall. Then we go to our next match of Chucky T and Orange Cassidy against Saban and Miro. Eh, this match was kind of like, yeah, to me, it was a low point. Not because it was bad, but they didn't do much. Just seemed to be a Miro coming out party, which isn't a bad thing. I have nothing against that. Um, I just don't know if it needed to be on the pay-per-view, if that makes sense. Um, they were hinting at it with, obviously, Miro's dominating performance, but then also he kind of... I think he put Penelope in danger and she got hurt at some point. So I'm not sure if this is just him breaking away once again as his own thing, away from Kip and Penelope, which once again, it could be fine. And you could still use the best man gimmick, not the obviously the wedding terminology best man, but like I'm the best comma man or I'm the best man around. I don't know. You could, you could pull it numerous ways. So I'm interested to see what the storytelling aspect of that is as well. Um, I obviously saw the Chucky e. T attack in the back. Did I, I, I must have missed the Orange Cassidy stuff. I don't know if that was in the pay-per-view itself or maybe it was in the buy-in when he got attacked. But I was like, why is he not around? I don't know. So that one was fine. Nothing too great there. Um, then I think we had my second match of the night, um, which was the Face of the Revolution ladder match. We had Six Way. We had Cody Rhodes. We had Scorpio Sky. We had Lance Archer. We had Penta L Zero. Um, we had Max Caster, and then we had our mystery uh, entrant being All Ego Ethan Page. So he is now All Elite. I know we talked about him for a potential of the Rumble just because his contract with Impact was up. So glad to see him in AEW. I'm um, going to be interesting to see what kind of an impact, no pun intended, that he makes on that program. Um, but yeah, this match was a lot of fun. Um, I think it was the first match of the night. I, I made a note here where I was actually like, super invested in watching the other ones i was kind of like yeah half and half um but interested to see that a lot of fun with it i think max caster is gaining more interest with me the more i see him more traction uh good diss rap um and he's just entertaining overall uh glad for scorpio to get the shot on wednesday we'll have to see if he's able to take the tnt title away from darby but glad to see he's in that position again especially from splitting from MC SCU. Not in a bad way, just seems he's been doing his own thing. So there's that. And then also I was wondering, is Scorpio supposed to be heel now, or has he just got a different attitude? He uh, kind of seemed a little dickish at points. So yeah, solid match for the Face of the Revolution ladder match. We go on to our mystery Hall of Fame caliber signee talent, and oh boy, it was a big one. We got Kristen, Christian Cage signing with AEW. Um, big countdown and everything. As soon as the music hit, I had to take a double take. I was like, this sounds really familiar. <laughs> Holy shit, it's Christian. I recognized it. Then the name came up after out of uh, Outwork. Everyone. Uh, interesting. I don't know why we needed this segment because all he literally did was sign a contract and then put it in the middle of the ring. Ah, he didn't even have a setup or anything whatever uh interesting one i'm wondering if wwe knew prior and if so good on them for not being bitter and having him back anyway um if not i wonder how the reaction is now uh Papa griff says the same thing so why vince mcmahon would bring him back for the big rumble appearance and not sign him I would just think it was a one-off thing. Like, I never thought Christian was going to sign personally. Um, I thought it was just a fun surprise. But yes, that is interesting. If, he knew, if they knew about the AEW stuff, like maybe that's why they didn't sign him, why have him in the Rumble? Once again, 
if they did know and they still had them in and they weren't bitter, that's great. Very happy for that. Maybe it's just to take the super big surprise element out of it to be like, oh, we can get this moment. And then when he goes there, it will be a little bit less. Maybe, maybe that's the big brain of it. I don't know. Um, but, you know, it gave that good moment at the rumble of Edge of him, Edge and him. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be interesting seeing what Christian does going forward um, with the company. Obviously, he's back by uh, wrestling. Great. Glad for that. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. So, um, big surprise there. I think that it was the biggest, just the holy shit, because he was literally the rumble two months ago or whatever it was. So, good for him. Glad he's better. Glad he's able to wrestle, do his thing. Match of the night next for me was Darby and Sting versus Cage and Starks. Uh, he's using the Christian Cage name. And he's got the TNA theme that he had back in the day in 06 and whatever timeline that was. Um, so yeah, we got Darby and Sting versus Cage and Starks. It's a cinematic match. Um, my favorite match of the night. A lot of production value went into it. I thought it looked fantastic. A couple awkward cuts where you could tell things were obviously swapped. Um, There's that lifting powerbomb of Sting going into the Destroyer-esque type thing. That was a bleh, cut, but... That was good. We obviously had Team FTW showing up with Hook and uh, Will Hobbs, as to be expected. I think everybody still looks strong in this. Um, I think it was a smart for Sting, obviously, being his first real, real match back. Um, so they could play it safe if anything went wrong. Like, obviously, you have these angles and whatnot, or the production value. Be like, wait, no, stop, let's do that again. I think that was good. I think it was smart with him and Starks going up against each other and then smart for Darby and Cage to go against each other because, like I said, once again, it makes everybody look strong. Um, Starks probably looks the lowest at this point, but I don't think I don't personally think anything less of Starks with this. He was playing his role. Sting gets all of his, like a lot of shots in, looks good for him. He looks strong in his return. Cage looks strong with the power moves against Darby because he can toss him with no... Uh, no second thought about it and then obviously Darby looks strong being the underdog and the small guy fighting this big monster of a dude so I thought that looked good overall um, we had some good spots some class uh, cool spots at the glass pane um, Darby being thrown in there and then we had the window jump um, onto cage um, I was concerned that Sting was going to get thrown out that window too similar to commentary team um but obviously that didn't happen. So I thought that match was great. One question I did have about it, was the referee really necessary to like follow around? Occasionally we would see him in the background. Excuse me. Or even in the foreground, just walking around with the talent. And it's like, why are, why are you around? I guess so you're not just standing in the ring waiting, but I don't know. It just seemed odd. This seemed just seemed odd, but that that was a great match. Love that one. Then we get to our main event: the exploding barbed wire death match. Kenny Omega versus John Moxley. Uh, it was a good match, hard hitting. Did well with the storytelling, I thought, and the pacing of like teasing the explosions and like preventing themselves from running into things to cause them. Um, rope explosions looked worked well, I thought. I mean, you could cut, you could see that like, oh, it's a separate line and the little flashy bombs that are on there um but i thought those explosions were satisfying and looked looked well the triple hell markers were kind of cheesy um with the little pyro next to it i thought they could have done a little bit better once again i'm not a pyrotechnic expert at any way but maybe presenting it a little better but maybe putting the smoke underneath it or having the explosions go out that way could have been better um but we only triggered one of that um, one thing about the ropes that I really enjoyed that they did, there was a submission that Kenny had on Moxley at one point. I really love that Moxley kicked the ropes to cause an explosion to break the submission. I thought that was a really good moment of the match, really smart moment of the match. I thought that was fun, so I wanted to make sure I pointed that out. Um, we had the Good Brothers come out. No surprise, blah. Surprised nobody came out for Moxley at all. Like, 
not the Young Bucks to try and stop it. I know they had the match earlier. No, like, death triangle. Nobody. Nobody came out to Mox. Nobody cares. So I was a little surprised by that. Um, it finished prior to the big boom, which I was a little sad for because at that point in the match, I was really looking forward to seeing how that looked. Um, apparently the timer was still going after the end of the match. So now we're building up the drama of this big explosion happening. We have the production of the countdown. We have the production of the sounds and everybody going crazy. And the guy's like, we need to get out of here. And then we get Eddie Kingston coming down, trying to save his friend, John Moxley. Apparently can't carry the man out of the ring goes to cover him because the timer's up everything's gonna explode and then we get what we got we got a little sparkler show and some fireworks apparently outside of the ring man oh man i really hope something went wrong because <laughs> if that's what they had planned the whole time Oh, God. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I hope something went wrong. I hope they tested something before today or last night. If they did and that was the result, how was no one like, hey, man, let's just cut the timer when the match ends? Or we need to rework that? Um, that was bad. And the thing that makes it worse, not from a talent standpoint, the talent did exactly what they needed to do and were told to do for storytelling-wise. The fact that Eddie Kingston was not answering to anything and selling it like he got shot or something by this pyro affected in any way just made it so much worse. I don't know what they could have done better. It just makes everybody look so stupid <laughs> with how this played out. If they could have tried to save it, maybe by Eddie staying there, perhaps, someone coming in and maybe like transferring a message to him to be like, hey, no sell it, be like questioning it, go, what the fuck? Like, do that that and act like it wasn't a big deal like it wasn't a big deal and modifying it that way i think that's the only way we could have could have saved that you could hear it in the crowd people were chanting refunds people were booing i think there might have been some bullshit chants they were then not happy not happy um and it's unfortunate because the match was really good leading up to that point and unfortunately this kind of takes everything away from it in a way because this is what you're going to remember like this is the first thing you talk oh the match oh yeah it was shit at the end it's unfortunate it's very unfortunate um afterwards on social media apparently moxley they were still filming moxley went on microphone and kind of shit on omega for the explosions I'm fine with them attempting to save face and do this and recognize, hey, this was shit. Let's acknowledge it. I'm fine with that. However, it doesn't do, I think, what they intended to do of, like, once again, saving face fully just because of the amount of selling that went into this and commitment to the bit prior. If they had played it off of, like, what was that there was nothing are you okay man and kingston getting up and trying to say like help moxley up and whatnot that would be fine but the fact that we're this man is over there being attended to because apparently he's dead not really but he's affected that much and then you're just gonna go <laughs> well i guess it wasn't that big an explosion what you're shitting on kingston even more like Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's not a good look for AEW with this match, unfortunately. Just just not at all. It's going to be a quite a boulder or something in the way. Um, yeah, man. I don't know. Um, 
little note I had, if it was a mess up of pyrotechnics, I assume they can trigger it on and off, make everything like a fail safe. Wouldn't it be odd, like, let's say, okay, there was supposed to be more pyro. Wouldn't it be odd that all these other people not protected are running down? You have Aubrey Edwards down there. You have doctors. You have this. You have that. Like Bryce Remsworth, I think was the ref, had that sleeve of his uh, bomb suit pulled off or flame retardant suit, whatever it was. He ran away. But now you have all these people with no protection coming in at the end of the match. Like, wouldn't that be a little dangerous if something didn't go off and then it does go off? But once again, I feel they would have that safe to be like, disengage. So maybe that's just me questioning it a little bit too much. Um, but yeah, it's just a rough spot. Just a rough spot overall. Um, so yeah, those are the matches and my thoughts individually. Um, I have some overall thoughts on the pay-per-view uh, a couple notes that I made. Um, I'm not going to lie. It was kind of meh overall. It was fine. Um, I don't know if it's just me being super invested in certain matches. Like I mentioned earlier, I think the ladder match was the first one. I was like, oh shit, and like really getting into. I'm not sure if it's just the talent with me hasn't resonated that way yet. And really the only way I feel that's going to happen is watching more. Once again, I don't watch AEW week to week. I watch Dark from time to time. So, like, I'm a little bit more invested in the Varsity Blondes and believing in them and, you know, some other talent. Um, but, yeah, there's others I'm just like, oh, yeah, they're on. But, like... I'm not on the edge of my seat or like, oh, shit, like I kicked out or whatever. I'm not at that point yet. And maybe that's just me. I don't know. Um, I think it is and like how I'm connecting with the talent. But, yeah, uh, took me a while to kind of really get invested. Um, throughout the pay-per-view, there's a lot of biting that happened. I think it happened at three different occasions. Matt did it to uh, Paige which seemed out of his character for Big Money Matt, but could just be the dastardly heel tactic, I guess. Scorpio Sky did it to Penta during the ladder match, which I thought was very odd. And then I think it happened one more time. I don't remember when. I don't think it was the Moxley Omega match, but somebody bit somebody. I'm like, this is happening way too much. <laughs> way too much. thought that was odd. Um... From a crowd perspective, I think AEW needs to watch the crowd a little bit more with their masks. I feel like there's a couple shots, cameramen, we're getting people with no masks entirely, or we're doing the, the half mask, chin strap thing. Like, if you're going to claim to be such a safe production, like, either A, don't show it on these camera shots, or B, I hope somebody security-wise is going to talk to those people afterwards, like, oh, the person in C six doesn't have their mask on somebody go talk to them or you know like i don't know just didn't, just didn't look safe um i know tony Khan had mentioned in i believe both the uh AEW unrestricted podcast and unbusted open that they were reorganizing the arena to fit more people and to have pods quote unquote sections i didn't see that anywhere no pods of what I assume he meant, like, plexiglass sections didn't look any different from the week-to-week -week program. So, didn't like that. Um, and then just a, a, a weird thing I noticed. The talent around the ring. Not wearing masks at all. Now, I'm fine with that. Because I know they get tested and they're doing their safety protocols. Totally fine with that. The only question I have is, obviously they don't have the mask on here pretty sure on dark they're all wearing masks while they're on the side is it just a presentation standpoint because this is the pay-per-view we gotta like see all their faces if so why not just do that on dark too seemed odd just a weird thing and then last but not least jack evans is mvp of this pay-per-view uh, he shows up for the tag team royale to interfere i think against dark order and then he showed up in the ladder match uh, to help out Max Caster, which I'm a little confused by. Why did he help out Caster with the boombox? I get it. Uh, Bowen is injure, injured, so he couldn't help, but just thought that was odd. Also, why not just bring out the boombox on your own, Max Caster? Whatever. <laughs> so just some thoughts there. 
Um, but yeah, that's AEW Revolution uh, 2021. Those are my thoughts of the matches and how it went. Like I said, overall it was fine. That ending is definitely going to be a sour taste and spot in um, a lot of people's minds, um, at least for a while. Um, I know they were trying to do something different, and obviously it worked appeal-wise. They went hard with the appeal with this, with the mystery opponent for the ladder match, the mystery signee of the Hall of Famer, and then obviously the, the, the barbed wire match. There was a lot of a lot of stuff going into it. And I don't know if they just kind of built it up too much, maybe. Like, there was too high of expectation going into the pay-per-view. I don't know if it was that. Um, but probably it sold well. And hopefully the end result doesn't screw them over too bad. Only time will tell, really. Um, if it's just one blip in the, the system along the line, then that's okay. You just... You don't want to hope for you hope not for repeat repeats or more blips or problems or moments like this i guess um but yeah interesting night interesting night interesting watch overall so those are just my thoughts on the revolution pay-per-view um if you guys did watch it i hope you guys enjoyed it um and if not you know just look forward to wednesday i guess see what they're going to do from there the aftermath um but this has been another episode of the wait what are we talking about podcast i hope you guys oh sorry what was the finish the mox and kenny uh kenny retained clean he one-winged angel uh mox on a chair i believe yeah that was the finish for that yeah so clean finish they beat him up more afterwards then the final like minute timer started Good Brothers, Callus, and Omega ran. Kingston came out with Blade, Bunny, and Butcher. They were trying to get him backstage. Kingston ran out, was trying to pick up, pick up, pick up, and he's like, ah, panicked. Final 10 seconds. I think it came down to the last three. Kingston covers him with his whole body, and then we get the little sparkler show. <laughs> yeah. So, interesting there. This has been another episode of the Wait, What Are We Talking About podcast. My name is Brett, a.k.a. Enigma9011, and I appreciate you guys hanging out and joining me today. Um, if you guys want to catch this podcast live, you can go over to twitch.tv slash Enigma9011 every other Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, unless we pre-record. You join in the chat. If you're a Twitch subscriber, we would love to have you in the chat with us because it makes the conversations oh so much more fun. Um, but if you guys can't catch it live, that's a okay. Go over to YouTube and SoundCloud the following week where it's broken out topic by topic and put as one big video in MP3 on the following Friday. And last but not least, guys, remember merch store. You can get all of your swag over there, t-shirts, backpacks, and more. Rep the brand. Support us. It would be greatly appreciated. Viewers, chat, listeners, appreciate you guys hanging out. Appreciate you guys listening and watching. And we will see you guys on the next one. Take care.